So welcome in this uh, new Future Farming episode. So today we're going to talk about the Robot Bureau. We have with uh, Michel. So Michel, can you present your farm and yourself, please? Yeah, uh, I'm Mitchell Patrick, um, working here at 45 South in Otago, New Zealand. Um, worked here for about 10 years of experience and I'm the orchard manager for this um, section of our 200 hectare uh, orchard. So you decided to uh, purchase uh, these robots. Yep. What, are, what is the main reason? Uh, the main reason is, I guess, lowering costs of labor uh, is probably the main thing. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the rest of the year, looking to automate further jobs such as mowing or spraying, weed spraying specifically. So how many machines did you purchase and when? Uh, we've got six of these uh, burrows here. Uh, we purchased them in October last year. In uh, six months, how many hours do you have used this uh, robot so far? Uh, in this model here, we've used it for about five hours. Um, for the harvest operations, we've probably used multiple of them for about 200 hours total, uh, cumulatively. So. Yeah. so Mitchell, could you present us uh, this version, your special version? Yeah, so main differences with this version are, it is the, the Excel kit already, so a wider wheelbase, and the main changes that are sort of the prototype things are a larger cell antenna just mm -hmm. as we're in the country having better better signals quite important uh, two extra batteries in here so doubling its battery capacity and raising the gps antenna what up. is the reason uh, for this uh it's just because the the current gps station is quite far away from here so any bit of extra height can help with its connection okay and, and in the back, it's quite specific. Yeah, in the back, so it's got a tow ball attachment mounted on it, a tow behind mower using three push mower petrol engines. And that's what you were saying, you would love to have uh, an electrical version? Yeah, that. having it be electrical or even just having these be electric start stop and then connected to this so you can run it through software and have it be geofenced to have it turn on and off. When you decided to invest in such robots, uh, how do you think you could uh, make them profitable? Running them being electric, just savings on fuel costs alone is a massive deal. And then as well as not having to have an operator working for those hours. For the harvest, you can save how many people, more or less? For harvest, it's more about easing the workload for the current workers we have and in future we could each of these could replace one or two people but for now we sort of are going to have a person working with them so it's more more of a tool than a, a replacement for a person now yeah right now you use it more for like a assistant yep. harvest assistant that's yeah. for a robot by itself and but for mowing spraying you could basically one machine could replace one operator yep that's the that's the goal so it's a little bit late for the for the harvest, cherry harvest, but can yeah. you show us a little bit how do you usually use it for harvesting? So in harvest we'll have it in row mode where it's looking at the rows and staying in the center. We'll drive it down. Once it gets to some buckets, pick them up. Throw them in. And head it to carry on. So very easy to use, only a few buttons. Yeah, it's just pausing it, loading it, and there's controls on each side of it, but doing everything at the back just means that you're, you're less likely to get hit by it. You're out of the way. And it's also not slowing down because you're in front of it. So it's it's going at its full speed the, the entire time. And once you're here, the robot is driving to the station? Yep, uh, it'll, this is where we'll have the bins. So okay. it comes here, grab them off, put it on the, put them in, and then it'll go back. So what has impressed you the most with uh, these machines? The GPS accuracy and the row navigation, uh, the camera systems improve quite a lot. It stays straight, it drives down the rows, it does it does what you expect it would do. And what are like the free improvement or some improvement you would, uh, you would need in the future? Improvements I'd need would be mowers that are electric and connect with the 
the burrow uh, natively rather than us having to do sort of workarounds for it. Yeah, so now we are more on a prototype version. Yeah. And the next step is to implement something more. Yeah, it's definitely a proof of concept that we're sort of working with Burrow to try and get a more proper solution made. I've heard that Bureau just launched a Grande version, so just the same Bureau but a bit bigger. Do you think about the... Yeah, so we're going to be upgrading all of ours, all the six we have, to the Grande kits. Um, just because the bigger, heavier, longer battery life can tow more. Uh, and with towing big things like this, which weighs 200 kgs, Anything else? Would you like to improve uh, something? Yeah, the software just could do with like lots of small improvements. The base functionality is there, but having it just sort of more user-friendly, creating custom routes and things like that would be... For the mapping? For the mapping mainly, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, for charging, I think everybody, every farmer is asking itself, uh, himself for charging, how do you work? Because we are in the middle of uh, nowhere in a way. Yeah, so we essentially have to take them back to a shed currently. Um, Hopefully in the future they have, there's a sort of solar power station that you could set up. Um, off-grid? Yeah, off-grid where they can go and park in overnight in a more on location. Uh, but for the moment, just on a trailer back to the shed. As a global, what would be your advice to a grower that is thinking about uh, purchasing this machine? You want to identify what you're going to be using it for. If you're going to be planning to tow things, heavy things, you do want to go with a large version just for the extended battery life as well if you're going to be using it for eight hours a day you do want the extra battery life so first uh, try to know what is your project and how you're going to use it to yeah. better choose the option yeah the what machine. you're going to use it for if you're you need to if you're going to use it all year you want to know what you're going to use it for and look at and i know identify what jobs you could either replace or help augment with it because you can just use it to tow and stack all your tools on, stack equipment on, as you go through an orchard or You can or basically do everything with this machine. Yeah, it's just like towing a wheelbarrow behind you if you want it. You can put whatever and just have it carry around with you. Thank you very much cool. for your, your time and your experience. And we will see each other in another place on the, with another machine.